Max Verstappen has just suffered one of the most dramatic pace collapses of his Red Bull career and the new post-race data from Qatar finally exposes the shocking truth behind it. Despite a sensational launch from 6th to 4th in only a few seconds, the RB21 fell apart so badly over the sprint distance that Red Bull now considers a full setup reset before Sunday even if it means starting from the pit lane. The internal findings reveal violent bouncing, unstable balance, destructive tire wear, and a setup direction that Verstappen called undrivable. The championship has now tightened to the point where one mistake in Qatar could end his title hopes. Before we break down the real cause of Verstappen's sudden performance fall make sure you subscribe right now because the evidence coming out of Qatar could redefine the entire title fight. The Qatar sprint became an unexpected turning point in Verstappen's season because the RB21 never behaved like a car capable of fighting for victory. His launch from 6th to 4th was breathtaking. He passed Fernando Alonso and Yuki Tsunoda before turn 1 with a reaction that looked like pure championship instinct. That moment kept him alive in the standings, yet the data shows the cracks began appearing almost immediately as the leaders settled into pace. The most alarming finding is how quickly Verstappen dropped out of DRS range from the leading trio of Oscar Piastri, George Russell, and Lando Norris. While they produced stable laps in the 1 minute 24 range, Verstappen saw his times fall away with growing inconsistency. The RB21 could not generate sustained grip, and every sector became a battle to maintain control rather than a fight to push forward. Red Bull realized within two laps that the sprint would be about survival instead of attack. The technical data exposes the core issue. Verstappen suffered violent mechanical bouncing on the brakes and over curbs. This was not the aerodynamic porpoising from earlier seasons but a mechanical strike that disconnected the car from the surface. The oscillation ruined his confidence on corner entry and forced him to brake earlier than normal. The RB21 simply would not stay planted, making it impossible to challenge the group ahead. As if the bouncing were not enough the car's balance collapsed as tire temperatures rose. Verstappen experienced heavy understeer entering corners and then sudden oversteer on exit. This instability forced him to slide the rear tires repeatedly on the abrasive Qatar asphalt, which destroyed the soft compound far earlier than expected. Once the tires crossed their thermal limit the RB21 lost the little stability it had left. Red Bull's engineers could only watch Verstappen drive below his natural pace to avoid further damage. The problems were compounded when the team compared his data to Tsunoda. Tsunoda ran a calmer rear-end setup that delivered stability through the long corners even if it sacrificed some entry aggression. Verstappen had chosen a sharper front end to compensate for earlier issues, but the chassis could not handle that load once heat built up. The contrast between both drivers exposed the truth. Verstappen's configuration had amplified the weaknesses of the RB21 instead of solving them. The impact on the championship situation is now severe. Piastri gained 8 points and Norris gained 6 while Verstappen collected only 5. This leaves Norris 25 points ahead with only the Sunday race and Abu Dhabi remaining. Piastri sits only 3 points behind Verstappen, turning the title race into a direct three-way contest. Verstappen must now finish ahead of Norris on Sunday to keep the fight alive. If the McLaren driver increases the gap to 26 points the championship ends in Qatar. Red Bull now faces a difficult strategic dilemma. The post-race data suggests that the RB21 requires major setup changes to be competitive on Sunday. However, any adjustment would break park firm and force Verstappen to start from the pit lane. The team must choose between preserving track position in a car that cannot match McLaren on pure pace or rebuilding the car entirely to give Verstappen the tools he needs. With the title on the line this may become the most critical engineering decision of the season. The central problem behind Verstappen's shocking pace collapse in Qatar is that the RB21 never found a stable operating window at any moment of the sprint. The post-race data makes clear that the balance Verstappen expected from the car simply did not exist once the tires reached competitive temperature. During the opening lap the car looked fast and aggressive, but the moment the chassis settled into race rhythm the fundamental weaknesses emerged. Verstappen depended on predictable front loading to place the car with precision, yet the RB21 failed to deliver consistent grip, forcing him to adjust his driving line corner after corner. As tire temperatures rose the balance problems grew more severe. Verstappen experienced a sharp increase in understeer on entry, which then transformed into sudden rear instability as he applied throttle. 
This behavior destroyed the natural flow he relies on to build momentum in mid to high speed corners. The car began sliding across the asphalt instead of rotating smoothly, increasing tire temperatures even further. The sprint format leaves no margin for recovery and Verstappen was forced to compromise his inputs to keep the car under control. The loss of trust in the front end initiated a performance drop that he could not arrest. The mechanical bouncing Verstappen reported represents another core issue. The RB21 struck the curbs with a violent vertical oscillation that disconnected the chassis from the ground during braking and mid-corner phases. This effect forced him to brake earlier and limit steering speed to prevent losing the rear. Red Bull identified this as mechanical rather than aerodynamic instability, which means the suspension was reacting poorly to the compression loads of the Qatar circuit. The issue worsened each lap as tire pressures increased and Verstappen was left fighting a car that refused to stay planted. Another significant problem was the rate of tire degradation. The combination of sliding, bouncing, and inconsistent balance forced Verstappen to work the tires far harder than intended. The soft compound overheated early, and once the temperatures crossed their ideal threshold the grip loss accelerated rapidly. The post-race analysis shows Verstappen losing time in every high-speed section once the tires exceeded their thermal window. The problem was not simply degradation but the rate at which it arrived. The RB21 punished its own tires instead of protecting them, completely reversing one of the traditional strengths of Red Bull. The competitive picture became even worse when Verstappen attempted to maintain contact with the leaders. The data shows the top three drivers maintained consistent laps in the 1 minute 24 range, while Verstappen's times fluctuated as the instability grew. Without DRS he lost the aerodynamic assistance he needed to offset the car's weakness in corner exit traction. Every lap widened the gap and transformed the sprint from an opportunity to gain points into a battle to avoid further losses. Verstappen no longer had the machinery to attack and instead was forced to defend against pressure from the cars behind him. The comparison with Tsunoda's performance exposed a deeper structural issue inside Red Bull's setup philosophy for the weekend. Tsunoda ran a calmer and more stable car that maintained consistent balance throughout the sprint, while Verstappen used a sharper front end that overstressed the platform once temperatures rose. This contrast highlighted that the RB21's weaknesses were amplified by Verstappen's aggressive setup direction. The car responded well in qualification attempts but could not sustain performance across multiple laps of racing intensity. The post-race analysis confirms that while Verstappen's launch was exceptional, the underlying configuration was incompatible with the demands of Luzale. Finally, the impact on the championship amplified the severity of the problem. Verstappen needed to close the gap to Lando Norris, but instead fell further behind as Norris and Piastri collected critical points. The sprint left Verstappen only three points ahead of Piastri and 25 behind Norris with minimal margin remaining. The RB21's collapse in Qatar is now more than an isolated performance issue. It places Verstappen in a position where the car must improve dramatically for Sunday or he risks watching the title slip away before Abu Dhabi. The sprint exposed weaknesses that Red Bull must address immediately if they want to preserve their championship ambitions. Red Bull's engineering team stepped into the post-sprint debrief under immense pressure because the data exposed a car behaving far outside its predicted performance model. The RB21 had been prepared for Qatar with the intention of maximizing rotation through the medium and high-speed corners, yet the internal analysis shows that the changes designed to sharpen front-end response destabilized the chassis once the tires reached full temperature. Engineers realized immediately that the setup philosophy chosen on Friday had produced a car that only functioned for a short opening burst before falling into a pattern of sliding and bouncing that they could not control during the sprint. The most urgent engineering concern came from the mechanical bouncing Verstappen reported. The data confirmed this was not aerodynamic porpoising but a suspension-based oscillation triggered by vertical compression over curbs and braking zones. The RB21 reacted too aggressively to surface changes, causing the chassis to vibrate and lose tire contact with the track at the worst moments. Engineers saw that every time Verstappen hit a curb the floor lost stability, forcing him to adjust brake pressure in turn in points. The team knew instantly that this behavior meant the car could not achieve consistent lap times across the sprint distance. Another major pressure point for the engineering team was the abrupt shift between understeer and oversteer that Verstappen experienced. 
The internal analysis reveals that the aggressive front wing angle paired with a stiff rear platform created a narrow balance window that collapsed once tire temperatures rose. As the front tires overheated they lost grip, pushing the car wide on entry. The rear tires then overheated from the sliding, making the car snap loose under throttle. Engineers recognized this was a structural imbalance rather than a surface level issue, meaning no and race adjustment could fix it. Tire degradation added yet another layer of engineering pressure. The combination of mechanical bouncing and sliding destroyed the soft compound far faster than expected. The degradation curve in the internal report shows Verstappen losing grip at a rate Red Bull had not seen all season. Every degree of added tire temperature increased instability exponentially. Engineers had to watch Verstappen drive defensively rather than offensively, knowing that the tires would not last if he attempted to match the pace of the leading trio. The situation forced a complete shift in strategy during the sprint because protecting tire life became more important than attacking for positions. Communication between Verstappen and the pit wall became a source of stress for the engineers. Verstappen described the car as undrivable and gave detailed information about bouncing and sliding. However, under park firm limitations Red Bull had no permission to make mechanical adjustments. The team could only acknowledge the feedback and take notes. The engineers had to rely on Verstappen's descriptions and telemetry to determine whether the issue stemmed from suspension stiffness, incorrect ride height, or aerodynamic load misalignment. The inability to implement solutions in real time intensified the pressure because every new report from Verstappen confirmed the extent of the problem.